Hallelujah. I guess you can adjust me now that I'm up and around. Ah, I'm going to put this over here so I can have some solidarity with Byron. <coughs> so we, we can cry together. <sighs> ah, yeah, yeah, go Ravens. Just somebody. Just somebody. Go, Niners. go Niners. Go Lions. How about go Jesus? There you go. Go Jesus. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use my laptop or this. Let's see here. I think today. Well, here's what we're going to. Oh, thank you. That's perfect right there. Um, Jeremy, that's perfect. We're we'll having that. That's, that's outstanding. Thank you so much. Um, as you know, every, and you may or may not know this if you're new here. Um, we, there are three ty there are three types of offerings, um, specific to the body of Christ. There's tithes, which you are supposed to give every single time you get paid. Everyone say amen. amen. And then you have offerings and you give out of the overflow of your tithe. And then you have what's called first, we well, have alms also. Then you have what's called first fruits. And as a church body, we've done this for years and it's been just a humongous blessing for not only the, the body of Christ, us, but also for you all, because I keep hearing over and over again testimonies about what happens when you all sow your, your, your first fruits. And so what I want to do real quick before I get into my message is kind of share about what they are, why we do it, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's coming up. So the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 1, it says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on your tab of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Now watch. Here we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. For it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Here we go. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So as I was studying this, because I really wanted to bring some understanding of today here. And so when I look at it, it says the Hebrew word for first fruits is bakurium. It literally translates to the promise to come. Everyone say the promise to come. So when we give our first fruits, we faithfully place our hope in the Lord for the promises to come. It is a way of saying, God, you can trust me with the increase. God, you can trust me with your increase. I will use what you give me to sow back into your kingdom. In return, I believe that God blesses us with the divine connections and kairos moments necessary to get us where he wants us to go. In other words, he expands our land. Everyone say, I, God's going to expand my land. And he does that because you're giving over and above. Now watch this. He wants us to go, in other words, to expand our land. Our land is not just about what we want. It is an expression of God's plans and purposes for our lives. Now, this is what's so cool. Ezekiel 4 to 430 says this, and this is what blesses me for you all. It says, the best of all first fruits of any kind and every sacrifice of any kind from the sacrifices shall be the priests. So, the, so they go to the house of God. And let's be real frank, they go to help the church, to help the church. And, and I'll show later on. Also, you shall give to the priests the first of your ground meal, which I don't want any ground meal, but trust me, uh, to cause a blessing, here we go, to rest on your house. A blessing on your house. And so why do you give first fruits in 2024? Well, first fruits help us with our storehouse. Every summer, for some reason, people forget to tithe. I don't know why it happens every summer. And so around March, I'm, a ma'am have a banner that says, you know, when you go on vacation, don't forget, don't take your tithe with you. And so during summertime, that helps us stay afloat because they go down dramatically. Number two, it creates a 
literal storehouse because we've gone through some benevolence here the past couple of years, and people have been out of work, whatever. And so it's our duty, and as a pastor, when I see my people hurting, to say, you know what, we'll help you out. And so that is why we take part in first fruits. Now keep this in mind. When you give your first fruits, they are over and above your normal offering and tithe. Okay, so don't replace your tithe with the first fruit. That's like having um, a $500 a month um, light bill, and then you have a car wreck, and then your deductible is $500, and you take that money to pay your car wreck. No, you got to deal with it, <laughs> okay? And so what we want you all to do is pray. This is an option. Pray. You ask God, God, first of all, do you want me to give the first fruit? Well, it's in the Bible. That's number one. <laughs> number two, how much do I give? And what's so cool about it is that a lot of our people are so well educated that they're already giving first fruits this year before I even can speak about it. So that's what's cool about it. So you go home, you pray, they're going to start February the 11th through the whole year. So I'll give you an example. I have two salaries, one from the church and one from my flying job. I give my tithe and my offerings from each one of those. We're praying right now what to give over and above that for first fruits. It may be $10, it may be 10000 who knows, but it'll be between those two. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. And so I want you to pray and seek God and say, Lord, do you want me to do it? And if so, that's going to be over and above your regular offering tithes. Amen? Amen. All right. Number two is we have a lot of new people here. And that's a good thing. And you all may not know how to get connected here at Empower Life Church. Do we get the, uh, the QR code? Now, we have what's called a church app. Pastor Blaine mentioned it earlier. And what you all can do now is this app is going to pretty much contain everything. Now, I will say this is for Apple phones. If you have an Android, we can just meet you in the back of the room and pray for you. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it's, it's okay. Android, just, you know, ronde se que da sanda, randa, get away, hey, KK, you know, so. But, uh, but if you have an Android, just go to your Google Play Store and type in Church Center. All right, and it works just as, almost as well as the real phones do. So anyway, uh, but what you can do, y'all, is now you can go and check out our awesome marriage group. You can go and sign up for that through the app. You can uh, go to our, our, our couples um, banner here and click on that and sign on that. You can uh, also, here, ways to serve, okay? I know y'all are just wanting to serve so bad. So you, so you click on that and you go to my groups and you can find out volunteer ministries. So look at their volunteer ministries. It says, we need help in our admin team. So if you are uh, if you are someone who's kind of an A-type personality, really organized, really creative, really uh, administrative, we need you. So you go on here to the app here, and you click on it, and it'll take you right to the sign-up sheet. If you're someone who is who loves kids, everyone loves kids. If not, you're weird. And so then you can go there and be a part of the kids' ministry. If you want to help work in the coffee room, if you have the dream to be a spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, tongue-talking barista, now is your time to go and, and be a part of being on the coffee team and be in the coffee bar. If you want to be in intercessory prayer, hey, you know what, go click on that, and you can be a part of our intercessory prayer team every, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. over in, in the KWAP room. Also, let me see, we, we need help in sound, we need help in media, iPad, we've, that's going great. Greeters, oh my gosh. If you can smile, so Brandon wouldn't do this, so, you know, but other than that, well, we'll see, trust me, Brandon has his own skills, all right. So, but, you know, if you can smile, hey, we need your faces to, to greet everybody coming in. So that's part of it. Um, and then this is real cool, too. If you want to be a part of a life group or home group, well, you know what? Hit the in-person group. We have the Joe and Shauna ELC Part 2 Church on Wednesday nights over there at her house. <laughs> we have men's ministry. If you want to be a part of our men's ministry, meet Pastor Blaine. He's over that. We have a ton of stuff going for the guys. And then also women's ministry, his good or her half. Lynn is now over at Women. So you have now everything you need in literally the palm of your hands to be a part of our church. So now God is good. And his mercy 
endures forever. All right, cool deal. Um, let me um, do something real quick, okay? Can I have my wife real fast here? I was struck this morning with this, and I'm just going to share. So many times we get a word from God, and we know his will. But God, I, what I felt like the Lord was telling me today is that don't try to tell him how to do the way. You need to be okay with, you know his will. You want your kids saved, but the way that he may do it may not look the way you think. So that you don't put him in a box trying to control the narrative. And so you need to release, God, I understand your will, but now I'm going to trust you to do it your way. And that was, that was it. There was more. There was more. <laughs> I don't remember more. This is a hazard of telling him I, what, I, what I think about in the morning. I share a lot of stuff, and he'll be like, you need to share that on Sunday morning. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was Monday. I don't even remember what I said on Monday. <laughs> so that was it. Just encouragement. Just to lean in. Just trust that he gave you the word. Trust he's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promise. But you let him do it the way he wants to do it. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to marry you. Okay. okay. Let's. Pick up where we left off two weeks ago. I, I heard my wife talk last week, and so I got to, that's awesome. So thank you, my love. So you, you can go buy some more shoes here this week. And uh, so <laughs> she said, don't pay me, give me shoes. All right, cool. Hallelujah. All right, so we've been talking about being undefeatable. And one of the things I've been saying is that if you have great faith and not faith that can can fill this room, but the Bible says that if we have the faith as the grain of a mustard seed, that we can say to this mountain, move and be thrown in the sea. And so we've been talking about that and how to understand because we have been taught, I have been taught, I've heard faith taught in the wrong kind of way. I think we can go ahead and turn those fans off actually, guys. So thank you so much. Um, I've been taught faith in a way that you've got to have a large amount of faith. Well, you don't have to have a large. You, you need only the faith that God gave you. And when you got saved, everyone was given the measure of faith. Not a measure of faith, but the. So let's look at, um, I'm, I'm reading out of the New King James Version, Romans 12, 3. It says, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, acting as, I'm sorry, according as God has dealt to every man, that means woman and man, the measure of faith, the measure of faith. Now, you go, well, what's the difference? Well, if I say, can someone come and bring me a car? It would take them weeks to do that. There are a lot of cars. But if someone can bring me the car that I drove this morning, it will take about five seconds. It is specific. So the word the is an identifier, is a terminator of what it is. So God has given every person the Measure phrase. So you ain't got to work hard to get it if you're saved because you already got it. What we work hard to do is to increase our level of belief in God that he can do what he said he'll do. Okay, so here we go. So let's walk through this, and I'm going to do a quick review, and we'll start with, and we'll finish up with today. So the word the is, a, is described as a determiner. It's used as a function word before a proper name to be to indicate the distinctive characteristics of a person or thing. The word a is used as a function word before singular nouns when the referent is unspecified. So if I said, I know of a of 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 a great football player. Okay, good. There are many of them. If but if I say I know the greatest quarterback that ever lived, and you all would say. Oh, my gosh. Okay, never mind. Okay. It's, it's Tom Brady. Okay, let's get over it. Moving down the road, all right? Moving down the road. All right, good. I'm trying to help out. Okay, never mind. Okay, here we go. So, whew, okay. You know what? Y'all are so saved. Y'all don't watch sports, do you? I know y'all don't. Y'all, y'all, we just focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so here are the three components of faith, all right? A, most importantly, how do we acquire faith? Romans 10, 17 says this, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the way you acquire faith is faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So B is how can faith be activated in our lives quicker? We must live in truth. If you're not living in truth, you're not living in faith. Because God is truth, God is love, God is light. So you cannot live by faith if you aren't living in truth. Perfect example. We're praying for people that we think are saved who don't show that they love God and won't attend church and cuss all the time and do stupid stuff. They either are not saved or they're highly, highly backslidden. Let's just keep it real. So stop praying that they come back. though They, they need to come to Jesus because they never knew him. Oh, ouch. Y'all okay back there? Did I just mess up y'all's paradigm? All right, good deal. Hallelujah. So truth, not love, sets people free. Truth, not love, sets people free. You can love somebody all you want to, but just, you know, I'm going to just love them. No, and, and, and they'll still be involved in drama. But when you give them the truth, it's their opportunity to receive it or to reject it. So stop giving folks so much love when they need the truth. And, y'all, I am the biggest person who does it. I mean, I had, a, I had an opportunity this weekend to, 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 to just to be really harshly truth, and I would because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Truth, not love, to be free. Also, we have to re, re-acclimatize our taste buds to what is truth. Because we've been, heard, we've been told a lie for some years or half truth. I'm going to give you an example. There is an issue in my life that I've been working on for years, and I'm sure that you all don't have it. It's just an, it's a my issue, uh, and, and it's, re- it's been challenging. I really love bread. <laughs> I know y'all don't have that problem at all. I like my bread hot, and I like it with butter, and, and I love bread. And I know y'all are cool. Y'all can just look at bread and keep on moving. I know that y'all. I know you can I really like, especially my wife will make hot water cornbread. Y'all, Jesus, but anyway, that's the point. So, but I went and bought this bread from a place, and this bread is, you know, you read the ingredients, and it says water, salt, and the part that makes the bread bread. That's just three, three ingredients. And so I, so I made a PB&J, which I love PB&Js. That's, that's, that's what, I mean, that's what God eats. I know they do. So, and... I bit into it, and I chewed it, and, and, you know, food is either good when you think about it, or it's just different, and I chewed it, I'm like, okay, this is different, and it wasn't bad, but it was the way probably my great-grandmother ate bread back in the 1800s. It was made from just it was made from just whatever they pulled out of the yard and some salt, and, and that's it. And it's like, wow. So I had to reacclimize my taste buds to what real bread is. When, when you go to Albertsons or Vaughn's or, or Smith's and you get a ribeye, okay, and you get it out of the regular part of the, of the freezer area, the produce area, is that, no, that's meats, and you take it home and you cook it, and we've, that's what we've done our whole lives is eat that kind of meat. But then you, when you eat a grass-fed, grass-finished steak, and when you eat it, you're full in like that because it's so nutrient-rich, you, but it has a different taste to it. You have to re your your taste buds. So as Christians, when we hear the truth sometimes, we go, that can't be right. Wait, you're telling me that? I don't have to do anything anymore as a Christian. I just have to love God and, 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 and walk with him, and, and I walk in the blessing? Yeah. What do you mean? I ain't got to tithe? Well, no, you have, but you get to tithe. Well, you know, I don't have to fast every day. No, you, ain't, you don't have to, but you get to fast. Wow. You have to reacclimize your brain to the truth. So John 8, 31 says this. When Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now, you only are free if you stay in his word, like Pastor Blaine said, if you are abiding in his word. If you are abiding in his word. If you are living in his word. 
If your word, if God's word is your filter, then you're going to be okay. If God's word is an option, you will have many, many problems that he didn't put you into. So also, the letter C, faith without works is dead. Faith followed by actions is belief, but faith followed by inaction is still doubt. Don't tell me that you love God when you can't speak properly to your husband or your wife we just had a fight with. Don't tell me that you're so in love with Jesus when you can't speak to your boss properly who, who, who keeps harassing you. Don't tell me that you... That you prayed in tongues all morning long, and then you get out in the parking lot, and, and you cuss at people because they can't drive right. Hallelujah. In the, in the quiet, Joe, it's just, it's just quiet. Man. So faith followed by action is belief, but faith followed by inaction is still doubt. So you have to act consistently to what you're praying for. You have to act consistently to what you're praying for. Don't tell me that you want to quit smoking and drinking. You keep smoking and drinking. True faith in God requires a corresponding action by the believer. So now let's, let, so let's balance this out. Now, actions don't produce faith. Let me say it again. Actions don't produce faith. Faith produces actions. So, if you don't have the faith enough to, okay, let's say this. I said last a few weeks ago. If you have a medical issue, okay, perfect example. I was in the hospital with COVID back in 20, 2021, and I was in there for six days, and I was on oh, had I I was IV'd up, and they poked me every night. Well, but yeah, four times a day I had to get blood drawn, yada yada yada, and I went in going, okay, Lord, it's me and you, me and you, Lord, me and you. And so around the fourth or fifth day, the doctor said this to me. He said, well, we're going to wait and see how the medicine reacts to the COVID. And I said, oh, wait a minute. He don't even know if I'm going to live. <laughs> I mean, he don't even know. So why am I trusted at home with a white coat? I said, Lord, okay, well, you know, Lord, I, I know you and I know that you're my healer. And so around the fifth day when I hadn't, gotten, I hadn't gotten out of bed in five days and I couldn't go to the bathroom on my own, I couldn't stand on my own, I said, Lord, I know by faith if I get home, I'll be healed. So I said, okay, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get out of here. Y'all, I lied, I lied, I lied. I'm saying my Shauna. I lied, I lied. How you feeling? I feel great. I'm awesome. I'm ready to go home. Well, 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 so can I go? So can I go home? Well, no, uh, no. You said the fifth. I'm ready to go home fifth. All right. Okay. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yes. All right. Took my blood, everything like that, you know. And the fifth. So the fifth day, I'm like, oh, I feel great. I felt like crap. <laughs> I, I I couldn't stand. If I sat up, my heart rate would get around 150. If I sat up. If I stood, I would faint. So, <laughs> so I knew that I had to, I said, I had to get out of here. I had to get out of here. So, so the sixth day, the Holy Ghost moved. As he was all, all the way long, but I had all my symptoms had gone down, but I still couldn't walk. I you understand I could not walk. And so they said, well, okay, well, we're going to give you oxygen, and we're going to wheel you out of here, uh, but please stay on the oxygen and, and the medication. And I said, yes, yes, hallelujah, I feel great. Yeah, I felt horrible, <laughs> horrible. They put me in the wheelchair, took the IVs out. Oh, y'all, and you know, and I mean, my, my IV came out one day, and they put it back, and they couldn't find it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got out of here. I got home. Well, so they wheeled me out, and I saw my wife's face. She didn't know who I was. I hadn't shaved in like six days. I had a big old gray beard. I, was, I think I was 100 and, 185 pounds, which is like 20 pounds less than I am now. And I got home, my son and wife helped me upstairs, but see, I, had, I knew by faith that if I got home, I would be healed. And so my point is this, if you don't have the faith to move forward, that's not faith, that's foolishness. Because when I went in, I needed that. I needed that, whatever they gave me, I needed it, praise God, and I'm back. So you've got to understand, church, that, that, that 
actions don't produce faith. You being in faith, then the action follows that. Okay? Faith has to always be working in your life, and then you go and perform the action. It's not the other way around. So faith without works is dead. All right, now, here's some geriology, all right? This is just for me, all right? Now, watch this. There are some levels of faith or types of faith. You have the faith of God. What does that mean? Well, the faith of God is the, is the faith that we kind of rent from God. We kind of have it on lease. I, I'll give you an example. Um, Galatians 2.20 says this. This is a King James Version. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So the, the, the faith that I'm using right now to live a life that's holy is not Jerry's faith. It's God's faith. I'm the faith of God. The faith of, so it's possession. So I'm using God's faith because you know what? For me to live holy, it sucks. I'm a bad example of Jesus when I'm, when I'm trying to do it in my own flesh. That's called an Ishmael life. Don't try to be saved on your own. You'll always end in, in, in failure. So it's important for us to make sure that we're using the right kind of faith. You cannot live holy without Jesus. You can't. It's impossible. That's why he came. <laughs> That's why he came. Hope no one's watching this. I have to, baby. I have to. I went to a pastor's conference this weekend. A pastor's conference this weekend. A pastor's conference this weekend. Did I tell you where I went this weekend? I went to a pastor's conference this weekend. In two days, they had five speakers, four speakers. Out of the two days and the four speakers, they used three verses. Three verses. Three. To a, what kind of conference? Pastor's conference. Trust me, if it were up to Jerry Cabers in my own flesh, I wouldn't be here. I'd be in Walter Hedges, Texas on my 30 acres chilling like a villain McQuillan. I'd be chilling. But because of God in my life, I am constricted. I am bound. Lord, you know what? It's not my will, but your will, O Lord. So I'm going to obey you. But how can we, how do you think that we can live by faith if we don't have the word of God to live by faith? If you're trying to live this life on quotes and feelings, you'll be like him. Just in. I mean, you'll be just, yeah, no, I'm, he's fine. Babies, babies, babies cry. You know, you know, but it's, they, they, that's how it is. So the faith of God. Now, so B, man's faith in God. We all have mustard seed faith. Uh, Hebrews 11 one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Skip down to verse 6. Now watch this. But without faith, means if you don't have the faith that you got when you got saved, the measure of faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he, what, is, and that he is a reward of those who seek him diligently. So you have the faith of God and you have faith in God. You need both of those. Here's letter C. You have a person's belief system stemming from their faith in God. Prosperity and blessing and holy living does not come by accident. It is planned, it is precise, and it is purposeful. That's from God, not from me. We have a saying in aviation, safety is no accident. Safety is no accident. And... When you see group people who have lived a long time in faith, when they have been believing in the faith that they had at salvation, when you see people who are prospering, they're not doing it by accident. They're doing it because they have a passion and a desire to please God in every area of their lives. I'm going to give you a perfect example because it happened and now I see it. When I was, okay, let me see here. 
when I was at my old church back home, we had a lot of ladies who are now my wife's age living a life of, of well, my husband has made enough money to where I can sit back and chill, so I will go get my nails done, or I'll go get my hair done, or I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer. And we had the younger ladies, the 20-ish-ish-ish, -ish -ish -ish, mad. And I'm like, you ain't lived yet, boo. I mean, you, you ain't done nothing. You, you, you know, wait till you get, you know, a little older, and then when you marry a man of God, and, 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 and he blesses you, and, and then, then you can sit back and chill. But don't get mad because Shauna or, or Shawnee or someone over there has a, can, can opt out to go to work. You know, I'm tired. I'm, I'm going to go to work today. So with that in mind, when you see someone who's, who, who has a great level of faith, and not love, but they believe in it, they've worked on it. They've practiced it over and over and over again. They've relied on it. They, they have supernatural spiritual memorials that they can think back on. Hmm, I remember when I was this and God brought my this. I remember when I was this. When God, I, they, they can live on it. So if you are a baby Christian, y'all, you, the person that just gets saved today has the same level of faith as Pastor Blaine who's been saved for 30, 40 years. Same as me. But it's all in how you use it. Trust me, Joe and Pastor Blaine and Sean and, and, and who else? Uh, all these mechanical back daddies, they will use a drill a lot differently than I will. <laughs> Trust me. I use my drill to take off my license plate screws. <laughs> hey, baby, I'm working it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, baby. I'm getting there. Do you know why? Because I don't want to break my nails. So that's why. <laughs> hey, shoot. And I'm not no metro man. I just like nice nails. You know? <sighs> Hallelujah. Romans 4.19. And not being weak in faith... The word in means endued with authority and righteousness. Hallelujah. This is talking about Abraham. He did, now this, okay, back story. God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. Abraham was 950, no, I mean, he, was not, he was 75 years old, maybe older. I think uh, his wife was a little younger. She was like 92, still spry, hallelujah. But so this is what he says, says, and not being weak in faith, which means endued with authority and righteousness, he, Abraham, did not consider his own body. Meaning that, hey, you know what, God, I know what you told me, and I see my body. Well, my body has to align up with what you just said. Now, let me say it again for you. Lord, I know what you told me because you're God, but I look at my body, and I'm 95, and it even says here that, that all his pumps are broken. Everything was just jacked up. And I look at Sarah. And she's worse off. So, Lord, I don't care what I'm seeing here, Lord, but you take care of my body. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what it says. That's what it says. And you know what? I think there's an anointing on, on all you women who've had kids want more. And I'm kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a, that's a lie. A bit of hell. Watch this. It says, oh, here it is right here. It says, and he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise, though unbelief. Now, what's this? <laughs> now, he didn't waver. So the wavering part is the belief system that stems from his faith, his little faith, his mustard seed faith. So your belief system stems from what you have faith in. You all have faith in every Sunday that we'll be up here preaching the gospel. Somebody, me, my wife, Joe, Blaine, somebody, Randy, Shauna, somebody will be up here preaching the gospel. You have faith in that. You have faith that hopefully that when you go into your car, you either push a button or you turn the key that it's going to go. Vroom, vroom. You have faith in that. There was a season in my life where I didn't have faith in that. I had this white Ford, and, and you know, and if it got below 
third degrees, I just pray in tongues. Even when it got started, the prince of <laughs> So then watch this. Verse 1, uh, verse, now, this is what the Bible says about wavering, James 1, 6. It says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven in the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Why? Because he is double-minded in all his ways and unstable. So, the faith that you have has to be stable. It can't go back and forth. See, that's why a lot of marriages are jacked up, because the wife and husband aren't agreeing on certain issues. On the kids, how you going to raise the kids, the money, the retirement. They're not in agreement. And you wonder, you, you wonder, you, you know, why? There's, there's no agreement. The Bible says, uh... That he commands the blessing when there's unity. He, he says, you must go right there. So when there's no unity in your marriage, there's no blessing in your marriage. I work with people every single day who don't want to go home to their wives. I'm amazed at that. But then after the third day, I see why the wives don't want them home. I see it. I see it. I said, bro, I don't want you home either. I, I don't want you in the cockpit. You know, <laughs> in the chain. I mean, you know, you, you're nasty. I mean, you don't wash your hands, you go to the bathroom. I mean, you're just, you're, just, you're just trifling. I see why now. But, again, that shouldn't be the case. Y'all, if y'all's marriage isn't peaceful, there's an issue. Y'all, I can't wait to get home. I mean, I get home. Yo, I leave Charlotte. I'm just, I'm worn out. I'm so tired. I'm tired. I get in the plane. I fly here four and a half hours. I'm sleeping. I get home. I'm just dragging and dragging and dragging. And I go out there and, and I look in the car like, oh, whoo. You know, I get happy. You know, it's like, wow, I'm home. I get in my bed. I have some food. I talk to my wife. I, I mean, I'm up till 3 o'clock next morning, you know, just talking, you know. So, church, we have got to change so many things. And that's why the world does not want to be saved. They see us. Let's keep it going. Here we go. We have God's faith, his belief for us. Now, here's what I feel, and here's where I'm going to start today's message, all right? So here's what I feel in my heart that God believes for us. Ephesians 1.5. It says, therefore, I also, after, after I heard of your faith in the Lord, Jesus Jesus." And your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, watch this, y'all, may give you, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, the eyes, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his power? So our daily prayer should be that God would open up our eyes to what we already have, not what we're trying to get. That God would open up our eyes to what we already have, not what we're trying to get. I'm not trying to get a blessing. I am a blessing. <laughs> I walk in blessing. I'm not trying to get favor. I am endued with favor. So you've got to understand that. You've got to know that you are already it. You are always walking towards your blessing. Do you know why God made us last? On the earth, why made Adam and Eve laugh? So they would have no need. Adam didn't go, man, I'm hungry, God, can you make? He goes, it's already there. God, I need, you know, God, you know, I need this guy. It's already there. So many times as Christians, we are praying for, we're praying for what we think we don't have because we don't see with our eyes, but you already have it. I love y'all's brain just cracking up. It's great. It's awesome. Church, when we lived in Dallas, my wife and I, we were praying for y'all. 
We already had y'all. Y'all didn't know it. Y'all were, he was wooing you to us in 2006, 2005. When I was out praying on my back porch on my, on my land, we were praying for y'all then. Y'all just didn't know. I, I, I didn't know the names of the faces, but I knew that I would have an awesome, incredibly multicultural, multigenerational, awesome church. I knew that. When I prayed for my wife, I didn't see her, but I knew what I wanted, so I began to thank him for it before I had Lord, we thank God so many times for y'all before we even saw y'all. So until you believe that you have it, because you think that just because you don't have it, you don't have it. But because he died, he's finished, you have it. The house that we live in right now, it was built last year, but it was established in prayer. God loved me and Tony so much that he had to move a whole golf course for us to have a house. He said, you know, y'all, I get that golf course out of here. I got a house for my cheerings. Y'all, he loves you so much that he will move heaven and earth to make it happen, and he already has. So stop waiting to get what you already have. Receive it by faith. Glory. But that'll make a saint jump. Hallelujah. Our actions should be a response to what God has done. Not something we do to gain a response from God. Get it right, get it right. Our actions should be a response from God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I walk in. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that my daughter is married to a godly man. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that my son is married to a godly woman. Lord, I thank you that, 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 that we have a retirement already. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that we have a new building. I'm all, so my response to that, even though I can't see it, is it, it's already, she, she's already married to a great man of God. Trust me, she is. <laughs> she already is. So, or, but it shouldn't be a response to what we want to gain from God. So I'm not fasting to get something from God. I'm not tithing to get something from God. I'm tithing because I love God, because he runs my money, because I've been young and I've been old and I've never, ever, 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 ever seen the righteous forsaken or its seed begging bread. I have five full freezers right now in my house, full of food. That we, that, 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 we can, that, and that we can share, that we have shared. I've given away stuff. We just got too much stuff here, girl. She, of course, she side-eyes me. <laughs> she goes, you start with your closet first, brother. So here we go. Faith is not a matter of getting more from God, but discovering what God has already prepared for us now. Faith is not a matter of getting more from God, but discovering what God has already prepared for us right now. Faith, whoo, here we go. Faith only appropriates what God has already provided by grace. Faith only appropriates what God has already provided by grace. Think about that for a second. So, Sean, when you're fighting a fire, and it's a fire maybe the size of a building, do you go get a water hose? Do you go get a little extinguisher? No, you get the biggest thing that you can get to take care of it. Sean is going to go ahead and access already what he needs. Even though he can't see it, he knows it's there. Hear me. He knows it's there. Why? Because he's seen it already. Now, he's seen it with his eyes. But the same for us, church, is that you've got to see what you, you've got to see what God says you have before you even see with your, in your hands. We, church, hear me. I prayed for a daughter. God help me. I prayed for a daughter. I got one. I prayed for a son. I got one. I prayed for a, I, I specifically prayed for a big, strong, strapping son. I got exactly what I prayed for. I prayed for a daughter who was gorgeous. Because I, you know what? I knew I couldn't marry somebody who wouldn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Understand that? Now watch this. So if, now watch this, church. If God's grace hasn't provided it, your faith can't somehow make it up. God says don't be unequally yoked. Well, don't expect him to bless somebody you dating who's not in love with Jesus like you are. God says to honor your father and mother so that your days may be long on this earth. And that's for those who are six years old and 66. Honor. Not, you ain't got to obey him when you got the house. In that case, don't ask him no money. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but... 
we have to obey. The Bible says, don't touch my anointed one. That's why we don't talk about other pastors. I don't care if he's having sex with 85 people. I'm going to keep my mouth shut because that's, because trust me, trust me, trust me, God will handle it. God will handle them or her or whatever they think they are. God isn't waiting to do something for us. He's waiting for us to see what he's already done for us. Okay? God is not at the finish line or the starting line waiting for to bless us. He already has. So watch this. Here's the way humans love. I love you if. I love you when. I love you because. That's the way we love. How sad. We st- so we think God is saying, I love you if you pray. I love you when you fast. I love you because you serve. That ain't God. He just loves you. This is how God loves, all right? I love you because I made you. The end. (laughs) I love you because I made you. The end. You don't have to work to get God to love you, y'all. It's it's already there. It's already there. Y'all who have kids or grandchildren, how... How, how insulted would you be if, if, if your grandbaby said, Nanny or Papa, do you not love me? Oh, it would just break your heart. Baby girl, little boy, no. I love you before, I love you before your mama was here. So we have to understand, y'all, that a lot of times as Christians, we're working too hard in the wrong area. With that in mind... Let's combine these faith concepts, and then we're done. Watch this. So Mark eleven twenty two says this. This is Jesus talking. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. And we'll learn here a couple of weeks that doubt is the great destroyer of, of, of faith and belief system. Doubt. A little bit of doubt can destroy a whole lot of faith. I absolutely love apple pie. I love it. I love it. But if somebody half sneezed on it, I'd give it to Sean Miller. I mean, really, I mean, you know, he'd... Of course, you know, here's the stupid. When we go hunting, y'all stuff gets dropping. The ground, you just knock it off. Because you, 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 you're hungry. You're hungry. The things men do when they're on camping is scary. So, whoever says this mountain be removed and cast the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, here we go, here we go, here we go, that those things that he says will be done. Why are they going to be done? Because God said so. Don't be praying for somebody's husband. Don't. Don't be praying for somebody's car or, or house. No. You get your own vision for what God has. You know the story. Of, I'll tell you real quick. When I met my wife, we had a, a date at Cheddar's. Yeah, she went to Cheddar's with me, okay? I took her out, went to Cheddar's, and I had a list. So if you're single, just think about this for a second, okay? Just keep this in mind. I had a list of 42 things I wanted out of a wife. 42. Well, it was a Sunday, so, you know, had to be. <laughs> and, I, and so I bought her dinner, and, and then I sat down and began to read them off to her. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. She had 38. I'm too, y'all, I'm too old to play. Too old to play. My wife said, potential ain't cute at 30, baby. It's not. It's not. It's time to grow up and get up. So if you don't have a vision for what you want in a home, in a, in a car, in, in your, how do you want to feel in 30 years? Well, I'll be dead. How dare you say that to yourself? Who says you'll be dead? We've got to stop, we've, we've got to stop sabotaging our future because of our present language. That's, that's from God, too. That ain't me. All right. And does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you, you ask when you pray, 
Here we go. Don't have faith, Don't have faith. but believe. 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 Your belief system believe. could be crippling you from blessings. Your belief system could be stopping you from God's best. Your belief system could be poisoning your presence and your future. Your faith is fine. Mustard seed faith. But your belief system. Your belief system. See, and this is just for the guys, all right? See, Patrick Mahomes knew that he'd win last week. Because he won the pass. He, he knew it. He knew it. Josh didn't. Josh ain't been there yet. But Patrick has been there twice. No, six times. See, I won't discuss. Right there. Yeah, it is a nice blue cup. Thank you, Bling. Belief is initiated in the heart, but understanding is established in the mind. Belief is initiated in the heart, but understanding is established in the mind. When, when I got through with my wife talking, we went out, we had a great time. Huh, I like her. She's attractive. We have things in common. Okay, that's a heart issue. Then I went to my mother. I went to her mother. I went to her friends. I went to my brother and sister-in-law, and they confirmed what they saw in her, and her family confirmed what they saw in me. So then it, w it wasn't a, oh, it was a, hmm, this is, this is established. This is established. Okay, well, let's move forward then. Let's move forward. The Bible says that within, that in, in the um, multitude of counsels, there's safety. Hallelujah. So here's your homework, church. Ready? Three things. And and I want you to do this. First of all, we said this two weeks ago, you need to transfer the trust. Transfer the trust. Transfer. Stop carrying burdens that aren't yours. Okay? If you believe God is over everything in your life, then that means you will tithe. That means that you will sow. That means that you'll walk in forgiveness in everybody. 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 I watch a lot of court TV just because I like law. This, this, this man was drunk, and he killed a whole family, a whole family. And the sister went to him during the court proceedings and said, you know what, I want to hate you, but my God says I can't, and so I love you. <laughs> Hi. Level of forgiveness. Transfer the trust. The anger you feel towards anybody, transfer the trust. The revenge you want to get back, transfer the trust. The fear you feel, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Why? Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication. Present your request to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will put a guard over your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Transfer the trust. Transfer the trust. That's the first homework. Second homework is this. I want you to rest. I want you, I want you to reach. And I want you to receive. I want you to rest. I want you to reach. And I want you to receive. What does that mean? If you are a Christian... The work, okay, you know what? If you're a human being, the work is already done. Jesus died for you. If you are a Christian, now you can rest in that. And all you have to do is work at your relationship, not at the rules. Because if you work at the relationship, the rules will follow. I don't have to follow rules with Joe or Pastor Blaine or Sean. Because I love them, and we hang out, and I know what they do and don't like. I'm going to give Joe a lot of garlic. He loves garlic. I'm going to give Sean beef jerky. I'm going to give Blaine crispy chicken off, off, off my grill. I know that they love that. I don't have to work at the rules because it's there. If I, you know, uh, Derek Chandler back there, I've known him for years. If I say, Derek, um, I'm, I'm smoking some meat, he'll be there yesterday. 
because he loves my smoked meats. So church, stop worrying about the rules, but fall in love with Jesus. And then, so rest, reach, reach. Oh, well, I miss having a little one. <laughs> just reach up, for, you know, for, and just say, Lord, I can't do it on my own, but I'm going to rest in you. And then once you reach, you can receive. My kids have to worry about nothing because they know that daddy and mama will take care of them for a season. When they come home, they, just, they, they, they go in the fridge as if it's, they bought the refrigerator and the house and pay the electric bill and all the food. They rest, <laughs> they reach, and they can sometimes be roguish, but you know, hey, <laughs> and they receive. And that's how they are. And that's how we should be with God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's stand real quick, y'all. And here's what I want to do. We have a little bit of time. If you'll say, hey, Pastor, I am struggling right now with resting, reaching, and receiving. I'm struggling with transferring the trust. I'm struggling with just, just letting God handle it. It's, it scares me. It makes me uncomfortable. It's an area that I haven't been before. And I, I'm, I'm just afraid. Well, praise God. That means you're an open book for him. I had someone call me this morning that I haven't talked to in probably two years. And this person is broken. I mean broken. And I'm getting dressed and this person is crying on the phone. Grown man crying like a baby. But he's broken. And he says, Pastor, I just need you to pray for me. And I'm like... I, don't, I barely know the person, but he knows. And, you know, he didn't call Hare Krishna. He didn't call. No, he called a person that he knew would pray for him. He was broken. And, y'all, we cannot move forward in Christ until we are, until either he breaks us or we do it ourselves. Because then we become a broken vessel. Then, then, then we'll pour it all out for him. So if you say, hey, Pastor, man, you know, right now, I'm just struggling, struggling. Well, I want to pray with you real quick. So come forward. I want to just lay hands on you all and just pray over you all right now. So if that's you, come on up real quick. Come quickly. Don't even, don't, y'all, don't think about your feelings. Just obey them in this point right now. Say, say, you know what, I need prayer. I need someone to agree with me. Agree with me, agree with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Honey, can you join me up here, please, baby? No. Uh -oh. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, done, done, done. And we want to thank our online family for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. God bless you guys. Take care. Thank you, Father. You got something? Okay, cool. You start there. I'll start over here. Hallelujah. As we.